Hello, everybody. My name is Peter Chow, and I am a second year internal medicine resident at St. Agnes Medical Center in Fresno, California. And I would like to talk about Zeeb syndrome today. So what is Zeeb syndrome? It is a collection of jaundice, hyperlipidemia, and Coombs negative hemolysis. This was first described in the late 1950s by Dr. Leslie uh, Zeeves. And uh, it was actually a case series of approximately 20 patients uh, for which uh, this triad was noticed. Uh, it only affects alcoholics and it tends to mimic GI bleeding just without the bleeding. So why this matters is because the true incidence can be much higher than um, previously believed. There are only about 200 case reports of Zeeb syndrome, but recent reports suggest that the incidence can be as high as one per 1,600 hospital general admissions. And this syndrome, fortunately, is treatable with alcoholic abstinence alone. And if you know what you're looking for, you can potentially identify Zeeb syndrome quite early before you head over to performing invasive procedures, such as colonoscopy or EGD. So now let's discuss our patient. We have a 38-year-old known alcoholic female with advanced fibrosis. She has a FIB4 score of 3.72, corresponding to a Medivir score of F3-F4. And she came in with some abdominal pains, uh, significant diarrhea that at first she thought was dark tarry, although later she recanted that. She said it was just dark brown, uh, nausea and vomiting. And curiously, the FOPT was negative. However, there was an alarming feature, and that was that her hemoglobin, which was 7.1 on presentation, dropped to 6.6 .6 even after receiving a unit of packed blood cells. So at this point, we were very tempted to scope immediately because of this acute anemia. However, there are some labs that make this picture inconsistent with an upper GI bleed because the BUN was rather low. The total bilirubin was 6.5 with 4.6 indirect. And the FOPT, like I had mentioned before, was negative. Now, her hemoglobin did drop to 6.6 .6 after a unit of packed red cells, but there were no outwardly visible signs of bleeding. So we got some additional labs. The haptoglobin was less than 30. Again, the BUN is less than 21, and there are some uh, studies suggesting that BUN creatinine ratio of less than 30 or a BUN of less than 21 makes upper GI bleeding pretty unlikely. So with all that said, we were now starting to suspect hemolysis. We went ahead and did some more definitive testing, so specifically Coombs testing, and the direct and indirect tests were negative. So the bottom line was for this 30-year-old um, alcoholic patient with cirrhosis, most other causes of hemolysis were ruled out. And of course, the EGD that was done did not find any obvious bleeding sources. It found some mild esophageal varices, some mild gastropathy, and a normal appearing duodenum. So what is the bottom line? The bottom line is that since alcoholics with cirrhosis and portal hypertension tend to present with upper GI bleeding, if the overall clinical picture in terms of the labs, the presentation is inconsistent with upper GI bleeding, then you may want to suspect Zeeb syndrome. And you can check a couple of basic labs. So we had checked the haplogobin. Um, another lab that you could check would be a lipid panel. Now I'll put an asterisk here because it suggested that Zeeb syndrome should have hyperlipidemia, but the caveat is that this tends to be transient, and for our patient, it was not high. The haplogobin indeed was low, though, and that's consistent with hemolysis. Another lab test you could check is the LDH. If it's greater than 230, then that's pretty consistent with hemolysis. And lastly, Coombs testing should be negative. Now, we have some images to demonstrate that the patients have had megaly, which is significant. She also had some uh, split omegaly, and she had some nonspecific uh, gallbladder findings. That's pretty consistent with cholestatic uh, jaundice. So that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.